So diagonal matrix is a matrix that has uh, non-zero entries only on the main diagonal. As you see, I have some examples here. You will see this is the diagonal of the matrix. The only non-zero entries are on the diagonal. Everything off the diagonal here are all zeros. So you see zeros here. And this example also, this is the all, these are off diagonal entries. These are zeros. So this is also a diagonal matrix. Here again, off the diagonal, you have uh, only zeros above and below the diagonal. So it's, uh, that's a diagonal matrix. So a matrix where the diagonal entries are the only entries where you have you can possibly have non-zero values are considered diagonal matrices. Again, consider this one here. You can you can see that the only non-zero entries are present in the diagonal. It's important to see this example because the zero matrices are all diagonal matrices as well, and all identity matrices are diagonal matrices also. This, on the other hand, you will notice the presence of these numbers two and three. Um, disqualify this to be a diagonal matrix because the main thing in the diagonal matrix is that the entries below and above the diagonal must be zero. Okay, some interesting properties of the diagonal matrix, we usually represent this with, um, so if we say that uh, the general diagonal matrix D, um, let, let it be defined as this, D1, 0, 0, so let's say this is the diagonal matrix D um, with only with entries D1, D, uh, everything zero except on the main diagonal perhaps. Then some interesting properties of the diagonal matrix that are worth noting are as follows. Um, the um, any if if we raise D to the power k, then it is simple. It's simply as it's simply calculated by raising all the diagonal entries to the power k. So we end up with so we end up with this. So you will notice here that each of the entries is raised to the power k. So it's very easy to calculate. A very, very simple. Um, quick example I can show you here. Uh, if we have the diagonal matrix 1, 2, oh, I'm sorry, 1, 0, 0, 3. Let's call that A. Uh, if A was a diagonal matrix, then A cubed would simply be 1, 0, 0, 27. It's as easy as that. Another property of the matrix, of the diagonal matrix, is the inverse. Uh, the inverse of the diagonal matrix is simply calculated by taking 1 over D1, um, the non-zero matrices, the non-zero entries. Now, of course, none of the, for the inverse to exist, none of the uh, diagonal entries can be zero, okay? Well, that's a condition for um, the inverse to, of course, exist. All right, so this is going to be 1 over dn. So here, uh, d1, um, d2, dn cannot be 0. For obvious reasons, cannot be 0. Because if they are 0, then the inverse will not exist. And, and you can see why, because it'll just become 1 over 0, which is give us infinity. So very easy to calculate powers and very easy to calculate the inverse. And therefore, now you can combine these and therefore calculate powers like um, uh, d, uh, d to the minus 5 and minus 10, minus 20 with no um, real difficulty. OK. So now let me quickly um, show you something here. If we just look at a blank matrix structure and here is the diagonal of the matrix, then the entries here are those where i is less than j, okay? And the entries here are those where i is greater than j, okay? So now um, for such matrices, uh, for those matrices where um, we have all the entries below the diagonal as zero, zero, we call those upper triangular matrices. So upper triangular an upper triangular matrix um, is a matrix where um, the AIJ, all the entries AIJ is equal to zero if, um, if I is greater than J. Okay. So AIJ is equal to zero if I is greater than J. So that means that the that below the diagonal you'll have all zeros. So therefore the only non-zero values could only be above the diagonal, which makes this an upper triangular matrix. In a similar way, we can have low. So the lower triangular matrix is where 
aij equals zero if i is in, in fact if i is less than j in both cases let me quickly show you some examples here an example would be uh, one two three zero three three zero zero four so this is an upper triangle matrix you can see that here this lower part the lower triangle is zeros and in the lower triangular case you have um, okay so maybe I'll make that two for now so uh, that is a, a lower triangular matrix now it has no restrictions on the diagonal entries actually upper triangular and lower triangular matrices um, have no restrictions on the diagonal itself they could be anything so that basically defines upper and lower triangular matrices now if you want to connect back to what we've been studying ref um, if you notice that um, the ref reduced echelon form is in fact a matrix that is uh, upper triangular it's an upper triangular matrix with the diagonal entries all ones if it if achievable just to note that okay just a quick uh, note on some properties to keep in mind the, the transpose if you remember one of the properties we've studied the transpose of a lower triangular matrix will give you an upper triangular matrix and obviously the, the transpose of a tri upper triangular will give you a lower triangular matrix the next thing we look at are symmetric matrices. So, symmetric matrices are those where the transpose of the matrix is the same as the original matrix. Uh, here are some examples. You can notice that here, um, if I check the transpose of, the ma of this matrix um, here, I will end up with the same matrix. And the same goes here. Now, what I've done is I've just done an illustration here of how one can construct of a, a symmetric matrix. If you notice, this is the diag this is the diagonal entries. So, basically, the symmetry happens, symmetry happens about the diagonal. So you'll notice that these entries are reflections, 7, 7, 3, and 3. Uh, of course, you can simply take the transpose of the matrix and it will be identical to the original matrix. However, the, it is this property, that property is the same. That's why it's called symmetric. Also, one of the reasons is that the line of symmetry you can think of is, is actually the diagonal itself. Some quick properties. If A, um, if A is a... Uh, uh, invertible symmetric matrix so it's invertible okay and it's symmetric right then a inverse is also symmetric okay so that's a, a useful property to keep in mind and we'll stop there with all of that. That covers all the properties of matrices that we wish to cover.